Howdy everybody in YouTube land. What we have here in front of me today is an actual CRT projector. So this one, I had a CRT projector years and years ago, but the red CRT had gassed out. It was an old Zenith CRT set and I couldn't get parts for it anymore. And that's becoming a fact with a lot of these. But anyway, so that doesn't exist anymore. And hasn't for many years. So I've, I've, I've found this one locally. I've got a plan for this. If I can get it to work. Um, I have a plan for this. In the future. And the future is really going to depend on a lot of things. But you'll see later on down the road. When we get to that point in the future. But people that personally know me. Kind of know what's going on. But I haven't said much. Because I don't know if it's going to go through or not. But. Anyways, so this is for the future one day, but for now, I have it in front of me because supposedly it doesn't work. Uh, it was local, semi-local. I drove down two hours, which ended up being a four-hour ordeal because there was a garbage truck on fire on the freeway. So, yeah, that was fun. But anyways, I went and picked this thing up, but one thing I've noticed right away is down here all of this plastic it looks like it may have been dropped or something at some point but from what i can tell this is let's see see that this is made out of that same garbage plastic as all of the rest of the stuff from this era was made so yeah just like those um SGI machines, uh, let's see, the Apple Power, the Performa series and stuff like that with the garbage plastics that fall apart, the Power Mac 8100s and all that, the same plastic, same exact garbage. So, no, it probably wasn't dropped, but it literally got knocked just enough to where this stuff is just falling apart. So, it's literally broken. And I got some plastic crap here that's starting to, you know, anyways. So... I have not turned it on yet. I don't know if it works. They claim it not working, but let's see what we have as far as this. This is a VPH 1030QI, which I believe is a standard definition model. 1995, based on that 5. Nope, 96 no 1986 oh dang 1986 i didn't think it was that old but that's neat so this thing was made in 1986 according to this date code so that could have been a who knows anyways so 1986 is not really the era for brittle plastic so this stuff must have been done by it was damaged like it was dropped i mean it's cracked in weird spots here okay so let's see what do we have on the front man oh yeah this thing's been through hell let's see price was right it was fairly cheap so we have rgb input we have normal super rgb input number one being from 86, this doesn't surprise me because that's probably like a CGA connector or something. Uh, let's see, you got composite video in, audio in, and out. So this thing is definitely NTSC. Let's see, you can see the background of my house. And there's the lenses. So let's see, how does this thing open? Or does it open? That's a big, I don't know. I think it does because there's this metal thing in here, but it is totally, totally, yeah, it's definitely, yeah, I'm curious. Let's go around back, which means I have to get up. I'm running out of room in here. This I have this thing sitting on a table, so, uh, high scan power so this thing can do more than just NTSC but I do not know Let's see what's oh we got a flap here projector on off input select 
What I don't see though is, hold on, this is, that's loose. What's in here? I don't know. That is a good question. Well, that was smart. All right, well, before I get too carried away, I think we should figure out how to take this thing apart first. I need to get this lid off, so I'll be back in a minute. All right, so I finally got this cover plate off. That allowed me to access these three screws here. So now, in theory, oh God, that's true. Yeah, I don't like the cracking sounds. I don't know. Oh boy. Well. Being from 86, it's probably not going to have surface mount electrolytics. Well, that came off at least. Oh, this plastic is just starting to crack. It's holding it. So, yeah, it's brittle. That's all it is. It's just brittle. All right. We have tough baker. And they're faded. Oh, this thing is kind of neat, actually. Oh yeah, she's vintage. Look at the the green power transistors. You don't see that very often. So that that's a that's a switch. It knows when the cover's on or off. Um. So now without that, I don't know what all of these knobs are. Um. Let's see. Sony Delta, Cincinnati, Ohio. Hey, my old hometown. Well, kind of close by. Wow, we got a TO3 regulator transistor here. 2SC 1114. There's a couple more. 2SC 1116. And another one. So, what is this then? Oh, you know what? Oh, wow. Look at that. A piece of plastic just hanging out. Yeah, this thing is just brittle, I guarantee it. I could probably glue a lot of that back in place. Maybe. But then the question becomes, is it worth it? <sighs> probably not. So there's that. These are just, it's so brittle, it's all busted off. Yeah, been dropped. And the, the finding another housing for this would be impossible. There's no way. And we know what the tube types are. Not like we're going to be able to buy them anyway. Oh, this whole thing actually. Oh, you know what? There's hinges here. I've never worked on one of these. This is the first one I've ever seen. Um, outside of the one that I used to own. There's a little amplifier module here, I think. Let's take a gander at the uh, capacitors. This thing is going to be a recapping nightmare. I got to hope that they're not bad. Ah, there we go. There's all these adjustments. So, for those that don't know, anybody that's watching this channel that's not familiar with CRT equipment, especially CRT projection. Oh, there's even more over here. So this is a CRT projector, and it's just like any other CRT set, projection set, like the big wooden box projection TVs. And what this actually is, that's the convergence waveform generator. So, the CRTs, there's three different CRTs there. But the picture has to line up, all three of them have to line up on top of one another so you don't have any convergence registration errors. Or it, it, you, so you converge the red and the blue onto the green. This board is responsible for doing that. And this is an analog convergence board. That's why there's a thousand adjustments here. So what you have is blue, red, and green. Notice there's minimum red or minimum green compared to red and blue because green's in the center. So you line red and blue on top of green. These are your adjustments like this is, you know, that's your angle, that's your top bow, this is your keystone, side bow, it's, yeah, getting all this adjusted right is fun. I used to work on um, older projection CRT sets back in the day and yeah, they're, they're fun. So 
from what I can gather right away, see there's the high voltage splitter. Judging from that, you can kind of tell how many hours are on it. Oh yeah, there's quite a bit. There's a lot of hours on this guy. Not a ton, but not minimum either. I wonder what all those switches do. <laughs> yeah, I've not worked on a Sony before, so or, or a Sony um, CRT projector. I only ever had one, and I only ever worked on the one. Outside of that, I do not know. But what I do want to do is while I'm thinking about it, let's uh, let's crack the top off because we can tell this thing has hinges. So we have a waveform board on top, and then we have a signal board next to that. And how I can tell this is the signal board is, well, we got a couple of delay lines here. And, you know, all of the other components. So, no, there's no surface mount electrolytics. But what I do want to check and see is if there's any signs of leaking electrolytics. Because, you know, I guess the big thing here is, for me... I doubt the small signal caps are going to have a problem, especially at this age. Um, but what will have a problem would be the low ESR types that are in the power supply. So now that is a, oh yeah, this thing hinges. This thing literally hinges up. Oh, that's neat. That's what that is. That's a kickstand. All right. So, wow. That's kind of neat, actually. This thing's got some hours on her. It's got that stupid circuit glue. They're using that corrosive circuit glue to hold the... Oh, man. Dang it. Oh, well. So, there we have a power supply. It looks like it's got a bodge wire on it. At least that looks like the power supply. These are the video neck CRT neck boards. Tell you what, those CRTs are thick. Oh yeah, that's the high voltage splitter. That also might even be the flyback as well. Nope, flyback's back in here, you can see it. The flyback transformer, that is. So, if that's the case then See, the optics probably need cleaned too because it's old enough to where that is likely going to be a problem. So let's take a look at the other side. I got to constantly get up and walk around because this thing's so big. So, yep, there, that definitely, to me, looks like the power supply. So let's see if we have... Well, first off, let's shed some light on the situation. Eh, hard to say. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. I'd have to pull it. I'm getting weak. Well, I don't have a functional flashlight anymore. Not seeing anything. Yeah, that's the flyback deflection board, so. Alright, well, um. I think what we should do. That must be the chassis number. VPH 1030Q1, March 1986. This thing is as old as I am. I mean, it really is. Ooh couple other boards on the bottom too vintage I'm not sure what boards are in there I do not know I'd have to pull a service manual to know for sure but I tell you what I do want to do though how about that's enough overview of what it looks like how about we try to turn it on I think this is the power cord that came with it. All right, so power on. Okay, hold on. All right, it didn't turn on right away. If I remember, there's a power switch back here.
nothing. Well, it does not turn on. Huh. Welp. Let's see what's on the front here. Power cord. Is there a fuse and then up? Oh, hold on. There's another switch there. Still don't turn on. Oh, you know what? Duh. Oh, there we go. Now we got, we've got fans. And I heard static. So do we have an image? Oh, yes, we do. It's in some kind of test pattern mode. The focus is really bad. Green's super bright. Blue is really dim. And red's extremely dim. I mean, it's not bright at all. Green is super bright. But blue is just kind of... And red is putrid. So... Yeah. That's a... That's a shame. Now, the optics are kind of blurry. And who knows why they're dim. The CRTs could be run into the ground. But the funny thing is, is I don't see any burning. So... Let's figure out if the problem with the focus is on the actual HV splitter. And how we do this is we have the top focus, bottom is screen. So without getting zapped, let's start with green and see if we have any control and focus with green. Yep, we do. Got that. Let's try the next one. Red. Yep, red's focused as good as it's going to get. So, this thing has optical issues. And blue. Uh, blue is focused as good as it's going to get. So, the problem we have, as far as the focus issues, is optical. Now, another thing that happens with these... I don't know about this particular one, but I know with wooden box style floor model CRT rear projection sets is the coolant that sits in the face of the CRTs actually starts to degrade and get foggy and all of that fun stuff. So, yeah, the, the green is extremely bright. Blue is hardly there and green or red's just red's the weakest out of all of them. So, yeah, um, I guess really oh yeah you can kind of see it down in there I guess really it's gonna be an optical issue with this you can actually adjust the zoom level so interesting all right well at this point what I need to do now is get the front lens assembly off and that I don't know how that is done yet. And the only way I know I'm going to find that out is through um, probably the service manual. Yeah, I'm thinking it's taking me a minute to... Uh, get my thoughts out but anyways as far as if the convergence is working properly I don't know I won't know until I get a screen which I don't have the room to do that right now um, so I don't have a screen handy but and the blues coming no I don't know it's getting brighter the longer it runs so this thing hasn't run in years green is super super bright there's a registration mark in the corner there. There's a registration mark there. And a registration mark there. So at least the crosshatch is generated internally. And I think... I saw a micro switch here. I wonder if that's affecting it. Nope. That has nothing to do with it. Okay, what about... No difference. Let's see. There's a switch back here. What does it do? Oh, well, there you go. All right. That must be the service switch.
Well, the good news is at least the flyback, power supply, all of the important bits to this thing actually work. Whether the CRT is any good or not, who knows? You can kind of see, you can kind of see the pattern back there, but only the green because the red and blue are basically gone at this point. But, um, yeah. All right. Well, I think. We need to take the lens assembly off. Taking the lens assembly out was relatively straightforward. It just, there's marks. There's marks just like this around. So there's one there. There's another one here. And then there's another one like there. Two at the top and then the same on the other side. And it makes these come loose. And then of course we have to remove those plugs. And I was able to remove the whole lens assembly and set it off to the side. So now this thing is open frame. And, and this is what I was saying about coolant fluid. You can see the level inside the tubes. And it's kind of foggy in there. So that coolant is probably bad. But let's turn it on. If it'll run without it, you know, these plugged in. We'll see. Do we get anything? Yeah, it's coming up. Of course, that green is booming bright. And even then, it's not perfect. It's clear up here, but it's blurry in the middle. Even though the camera is blanking, it's hard to see. But you can tell it's blurry. This one here is extremely sharp, and then that one's also blurry. So the coolant itself, I can see the haze in here. You can just see this haze. That haze is created by the, the coolant in the CRTs. The, the coolant has to be replaced. So I'm going to have to pull the tubes, which is going to be a royal pain in the ass. But I'm going to have to pull the tubes and we're going to have to change the coolant in order to fix this thing properly. So um, uh, one other thing to note is I believe the blue CRT is weak because... If I go to the screen controls, I could turn the green way down so it's not blanking as bad. Um, but if I go to turn the blue up, oh, actually, that's the red. So if I turn the blue up, it's bottomed out. I'm literally, I can't turn it up anymore. And the red, if I turn the red up, it just goes straight into a retrace lines. I'm not really getting any brightness out of red, really. So... Blue, I have no, I mean, it's literally turned all the way up. I can't, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to have to do some research, but I think that CRT is weak. This one's obviously the strongest. I had to turn it way down to match, and then red is the next in line. So I'm probably going to need to get CRTs for this thing, which would kind of not do me any good to do the coolant. Uh, sometimes these CRTs do pop up from time to time, but yeah, anyways, that's probably what we're going to have to do eventually, but I will do some further investigation just to make sure it's not, um, a video circuit or something like that. And the way I can do that is if I get the pinouts to these CRTs, I can use my Syncor CR161 and actually test them doing emissions test to see if the CRT is actually indeed weak and I'll be able to tell right away at that point. It's hard to do this with the camera blanking it, but see the if I turn the picture control up. But it only does it on blue. If I go to red, it doesn't do it at all. It kind of does until the beam limiter kicks in. Same thing if I go green. It doesn't do it. God, that's bright. Well, it kind of does, but not until blue is kicked in. I think what we're going to do next before we go any further with this is we need to, because the problem is the blue tube is just so weak. The red tube's a lot stronger, but it's still kind of weak. The green is extremely strong, but I need to roll out um, the CRT itself from being bad. And honestly, what's what's kind of weird to me is typically with a weak CRT if you turn the G2 the screen drive up you'll get a washed out inverted picture you know 
I don't get that. I don't get any retrace lines at all when I turn the screen up. This one I do. I do get retrace lines, and the thing is very bright if I turn the brightness all the way up. But I get the weird herringbone pattern in the picture when I do that, so I need to work on that too. But that's secondary because if the CRT is bad, there's no sense in going forward because I can't find those CRTs. There's one online right now, this one here, and that's it. I can buy the red one. And the red one, if I were to give a percentage, the green one I'd say is about 85, 90%. This one's probably about 60, and this one is maybe 30. So, yeah. Anyways, what I need to do next is to, to actually pull the CRT and test it. So, best way to do that is to... I got I found a service manual um, so I got to see if I have a nut driver that will get to these bolts uh, I think I do I'll get those out I will pull the two screws off for the yoke and the convergence coil and remove that and remove this and just carefully slide the CRT out and then I will put it on my tester and check the emission to see if it's weak because if the tube tests strong then we can safely put that aside. I can check the other two and you know do a, a, a an analysis on that, and then from that point we can figure out where we can go with it. Because if the CRTs are actually good, then we can start chasing the circuitry and figuring out maybe if it's a weak capacitor or something like that. And my drive signals are not good, and um, I'm trying to determine a way. I can't really get in here because what I was wanting to do is move this board out of the way this is the video amplifier board um, and do a voltage check on the CRT socket pins compared to green and red to see if they're all matching because if they are then we have a problem with the CRT emission but it's just easier to pull the CRT and test it uh, I probably will not have a socket for that CRT because this CRT is a lot newer than what my CRT tester is capable of but that's not a problem. I've got a universal adapter that I made for old 50s black and white CRTs that I can use for this. So, yeah, let's um, let's get the CRT out and then we're going to do an inspection and see if we can test it and determine if the CRT is in fact weak. Alright, so now we have the CRT pulled and that was fun. So, I had to loosen up the yoke and the convergence coil assembly but not only that getting that high voltage lead out was also fun because the wire has to be pressed down there's a spring in there and you got to press it down really hard and then turn it so the grooves line up which these little ears right here will be in the way if you don't so you line it up and then the whole thing will slide out that's what keeps it in there so CRT has been pulled um, one thing I noticed right away now that I've got it out and I'm looking at it, you can see all of the fungus and stuff in there, but you can kind of see a light burn in. So, yeah, um, I think the coolant chamber is sealed because the trouble is, yeah, this is fun. The trouble is, this is all like silicone in place, so there's no fixing it, I don't think. Not easily. But yeah, you can see there's a bunch of crap in the coolant. So, well, I'm not wasting my time if the CRT is bad. So now that we have it removed, we can take a look at the base, which it uses a dual focusing anode. Um, I have the service manual that gives me the pin out of this. So we're going to go pull that up real quick. And then I'm going to grab my tester. And then we're going to test the CRT. So as far as the CRT tester is concerned, I have... The CR161, which I had to modify and do some work to it. But um, anyway, so what I made is I made this little old school CRT adapter to um, clip leads, which you'll see why I made that in an upcoming video eventually. But for now, we need to get that onto this CRT. And what I did was I printed out both um, manuals here. So that adapter fits this particular CRT, which gives me, you know, what they all are. So I got my two heaters, I got my grid one, I got my screen, and I have my cathode. And then there's the focusing and whatever else, which I don't need. But if I look at the Sony service manual where I clipped out a section 
that I need. These are the focusing grids, which I don't need. But again, we have grid one, grid two, we have both heaters, and we have cathode. So I can actually wire that up and according to this with the leads here. So let's do that real quick because I need both hands. All right, I have my little socket adapter plugged in and I have all the pins hooked up. I've got my G2, my G1, both heaters, and cathode. All right, so let's put this on filament set. Let's turn the power on. Make sure it's adjusted properly. I don't know if this is a 6.3 or a 12.6 volt filament. I guess we're gonna find out. Do we have any glowage? Nope. All right, let's turn the filament up. Eight volts. Do we have any glowage with eight volts? I guess I could probably pull the spec on this tube, but I don't know. I'm looking at the socket. Now, it's entirely possible that I'm looking at this thing backwards. And the filaments are on the other side. I don't know. Shouldn't matter, because unless well, I don't know. And I don't think that's the filament. So let me put this back down to six volts. Turn the power off. All right. Um, so let's try this again. But this time, I'll do the reverse. So give me one second. All right. Let's start it from that direction and see if that does anything. Now we're drawing current. Let's see, do we have any glowing? I don't know if this is a 6.3 or a 12.6 volt filament, but... It looks like I have glowing now. So the cathode is glowing. So let's see. Check for shorts. No shorts. Set gun balance. Oh, we got gun balance. All right. Let's check emissions. Oh, yeah. She's weak. And there's the problem. Let's see. Let me do the life test here. Oh, yeah. That CRT is a goner. And there's the problem right there. Yep, there you go. So, kick it up to 8 volts. Eight volts buries it, but you know, just let it cook at eight volts for a minute. I might need to do a clean or rejuve. Of course, the problem with rejuvenation is it's only temporary. Because as soon as I knock this back down to six volts, yep. That CRT is gone. It's an unfortunate situation. But. Alright, let me, uh, let's see if I want to, I got to think about this, but I think, uh, I think this is going to be the end of the road for this guy, unfortunately. Um, so I need. I, don't, I can't proceed any further until I can locate some replacement tubes because that that's pretty much the end of the road for this guy. So until I can find tubes, there's really no point in putting any more work into it. Anyways, the other thing too I noticed is um, when I was taking this apart and I removed this board, it exposed this capacitor. Now look at it. The top is pretty domed. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but you can definitely tell. So that one is probably bad. I don't know, but it's possible. But um, anyways, I think that's going to do it for this one, guys. So thank you for watching. If you have a comment, please feel free to leave one. Hit the like, subscribe. If you want to see any more future videos. If not, you know what to do. You can hit the thumbs down. Um, thanks for watching. And until next time, guys.